Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here to explain to you why parallel compression, specifically parallel compression on drums, just might not be for you. Let's dive into it. Now, parallel compression is something that people often ask me about. And of course, there are tons of YouTube videos on this topic. It's a very popular mixing technique. And the truth is I use it all of the time myself, but I don't always use it. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you my philosophy behind parallel compression, when I decide to use it and why it might not be for you, depending on the genre or even subgenre of metal or rock that you're producing or mixing. Now, like I said, I personally use parallel compression a lot in my mixes, but I only use it when I want the drums to be super punchy, almost otherworldly and just gigantic sounding. I have a mix pull up here where I'm using parallel compression and I want you to pay close attention to the drums. Check it out. So as you can hear, the drums are super punchy in your face and the parallel compression is definitely helping create this drum sound. I'm gonna intermittently bypass the parallel compression in this mix, and I want you to hear what it's adding to the mix. As you can hear, this parallel compression is adding a lot to the drum sound. It's making the drum sound way more punchy and way more aggressive. But again, I don't always want this. And a lot of times people will send me, you know, mixes that might be old school punk rock, maybe even indie rock, or just a genre of music that's supposed to be much more natural, organic, and open sounding. And usually in these cases, I recommend not using parallel compression at all. And I have another mix here to use as an example. So the last mix was more of a modern metal style production. Super loud, punchy, the usual thing. This mix here is more of a hard rock production that has sort of like an indie rock sort of kind of edge to it. And I wanted the mix to be very earthy sounding and open. I wanted the drums to sound big, but not crazy in your face with the snare drum punching you in the chest. That's not what I was going for here. Let's take a listen. the drums are still big sounding, but they sound like they're in the mix, not punching through the mix, if that makes sense. And often people will send me recordings that feature genres of music that call for more of this style of drum bus processing. So you might be wondering, okay, well that's fine and dandy. If I'm not using parallel compression on my drum bus, what should I be using on my drum bus? Well, what I like to do if I want the drums to be somewhat glued together, but I still want them to be very open and not overly processed, I'll just go for some light drum bus compression, just knocking off a few dB and some subtle tape saturation. So I'm gonna play the mix back once more and pay close attention to the meter in my drum bus compressor here. Just two to four dB of gain reduction, nothing crazy. And of course I have a little bit of tape saturation. just to tame transients. But again, I'm not trying to flip the drum sound inside out. I still want it to be very dynamic and to be more in the background and to blend in with the music and to not necessarily cut through the music. Parallel compression is an amazing mixing technique. And again, like I said, I use it myself. But when I want to produce something that sounds more like this, something that's more open, 
I just go for regular drum bus compression. I don't use parallel compression. And I recommend you trying the same thing. Parallel compression just might not be for you, depending on the genre of music that you're working on. And like I've said, people ask me about this a lot. I think it's because it's such a widely used technique and it comes in so handy for so many applications. And it's talked about so commonly that people forget that you don't have to use it. So in short, if you're going for an ultra modern, gigantic, hard hitting drum sound, use parallel compression. If you're going for a more organic, open, dynamic, and less aggressive drum sound, don't use parallel compression. The choice is yours. Now, the thing that most home studio owners don't realize is that there's a lot more involved to producing a great sounding mix than just messing around with EQ and compression. It really comes down to how you produce your music as a whole. And unfortunately, there are often huge gaps in people's knowledge when it comes to audio production. Now, I don't want this for you. I want you producing great sounding results with the gear you're currently using. And because of this, I'm offering you direct access for absolutely free to my training for dead simple ways to massively improve your recordings and mixes. In this free training, I share with you my number one technique for prepping guitar tracks that virtually mix themselves. I also show you how you can create instantaneous clarity within your mix using any old stock EQ plugin. You'll also learn how to take control over the levels in your mix so instruments stop fighting with one another. And then finally, you'll learn how to craft radio ready vocal mixes using only stock plugins. Now, full disclosure, if you're one of these people that's constantly scrolling through TikTok and you have the attention span of a squirrel, do yourself a favor and don't watch the training. The training is in depth, it's almost an hour long and it's meant for people who are serious like I was about audio production. You can have direct access to the training for absolutely free. There's a link below in this video's description. Click the link and join me in the training. Now, the interesting thing is that home recording, as we know it, DAWs, plugins, and USB interfaces, it's been around for a long time, well over 20 years. But if you've been paying attention, you probably realize that home recordings are still sounding like home recordings. Now, the reason for this is that so many of us are making the same mistakes in our home studios. Now, if you want to avoid these mistakes and skip over them and get to producing the results that you really want to produce, check out this video. In the video, I highlight the areas where people tend to go wrong when it comes to home studio production. Watch the video, learn from it, and avoid making these mistakes yourself. Until next time, drink that spin drift. <laughs>